Welcome to Expecting Women's Ministry with Minister B.J. Franklin. I am your host talking about learning how to pray. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it no matter what. I'm so grateful to God that his mercies are new every morning. So we thank God for that. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, why don't you get on the phone? Go call a neighbor, call a friend, call a relative and let them know Minister B.J. Franklin is on and she is ministering the word of prayer, talking about prayer in the word of God. Be sure that you have your Bible, your pad, and your pen so that you can take down scripture, so that you can go back and read later on so that you can get information on how to get in touch with me. That's right as well. But before we get into the word of God, you know I talk about wellness because that is something also that God has given me as well. I want us to continue to take care of the temple of God. Don't you know that your bodies is the temple of God? The Holy Spirit lives on the inside side of us. And you know what? We want it to live in a clean temple because God said, I will not dwell in an unclean temple. That's right. So what's coming out of your mouth? What's going in your mouth? That's right. He says, it's not that what goes in really that defiles you. It's what comes out that is defiling us. But you know what? As we begin to talk about wellness, a lot of things are going on in our bodies because we're not taking care of the temple of God. Look at your day to day. Look at how you eat. How well do you eat? Are you still eating a bunch of carbs? Are you still eating a lots of candy, sugary things like that? Because you know what? That will cause a lot of pain in the body. So we're going to have to eat plenty of green food. That's right. I fixed a green soup the other day and I'm telling you it was delicious. I put me some broccoli in it. I put me some spinach in it. I put me some green peas in it. I went on and put me some green uh, uh, um, green beans in it as well. That's right. And I'm telling you it was delicious. Go and make you a green soup. That's right. Begin to eat more green food. Eat more fruits. That's right. And put that in the temple of God. Not all those carbs and that sugary stuff that we do eat. And you will see it will help you to feel better in your body. Because as we age, we cannot stop the body from aging. That's right. Every, the clock is ticking. It's ticking right now. And we're getting older and older. But you know what? The, the, the inward man is renewed day by day. Even though this outward man is perishing day by day. But you know what? You can do something about the way you feel. You need to drink plenty of water. I continue to stress that to us. Drink that water. At least 32 to 64 ounces of water. You need to flush the body out. I'm telling you, that's what the water does. And we need to fast. You need to rest from eating. That's right. No food at all. I'm telling you. I told y'all before. I have went without eating food for, for 40 days. Yes, I have. I have went without eating food for 21 days. Yes, I have. I have done the Daniel fast and it flushes the body out. That's right. Because the body needs a rest. That's right. We're praying. We're asking God, Lord, I, I, I need a healing. Lord, my knee hurt. Lord, my neck hurt. Lord, my shoulder hurt. This hurt. That hurt. You go to the doctor. What does he do? He push you some drugs. He push some drugs off on it. I call them legal drug pushers. Yes, they do. All this different medication that we're on and all this stuff. All we need to do is exercise and eat healthy. That's right. Green food. Drink water. Walk at least five days a week. Hey, or exercise with me. Facebook Live. I'm there three days a week. I'm working from the inside out. You can sit and 
be fit. That's what we do. Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. I am there. That's right. Ministering. That's right. It's not just exercise for me. This is a ministry for me. We're working out spiritually, physically, and mentally. That's right. So if you want to feel good, that's right, from the inside out, Eat a healthy diet. Drink plenty of water, 32 to 46 ounces of water. That's right. Get you exercise in at least five days a week. You can walk 30 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour at least five days a week. And then not only that, I always said, mind your own business. Stop being in other folks' business. Leave them grown children alone. Those are your grandchildren. They're raising their children. Quit stress stressing yourself. You're stressing about stuff and things that you can't even change. Yes, you are. And guess what? It is bearing on the body. Yes, it is. Walking around with all those weights and it is just weighing us down. The Bible tells us, lay aside every weight and sin that does easily beset us. That's right. This, uh, this stuff you're going through is easily beset you. And all you have to do is mind your own business. Get on out. Get your exercise in. That's right. You know what? I used to have a walking partner. Uh, every time I would I would go walk, they would go walk. She called and said, well, she's not walking today, then I won't walk, you know, and then we'll walk for a couple of days, then she's not going to walk, you know what, I do it by myself, me and the good Lord, that's right, I put my earbuds in my ear, and I am going to get my walk on, this is for you, that's right, this is for me, so be sure, get your walk in, mind your own business, and be sure that you get plenty of rest. You're going to have to rest the body, rest the mind. You might go to sleep, but you're not rested. You wake up tired as if you've been tossing and turning and beat all night long. You're laying down sleeping, but you're not resting the body. Learn to get a good night rest. That's right. Turn the TV off. Turn the radio off. Put the hand game down. That's right. And rest your body as well. And I'm telling you, have a powerful prayer life because you're going to have to pray. Have a powerful prayer life. That's right. We're asking God to do all these things, but we're not doing nothing. You, you're waiting on God and God said, now he said, I'm waiting on you. You know, are you praying or do you have a prayer life? Not just pray, but a prayer life, a life of prayer. This is me. This is what I do. I have a life of prayer. That's right. Get you a life of prayer. Study the word of God. Get into the word of God and allow the word of God to get into you. The Bible said, let the word of God dwell in us richly. That's right. So you're going to have to allow the word of God to dwell in you. But you can't do that until you put yourself in position. That's right. You're going to have to put yourself in position to go and get Bible study, get taught. That's right. You have to be taught the Word of God. That's right. Listen to the Word of God. Be taught the Word of God. Meditate on the Word of God. Speak the Word of God. You can speak it over your life, but you can't speak it over your life if you don't know it. The Bible tells us life and death is in the power of the tongue. And guess what? If you do those things, God is going to do the rest. Yes, he is. So be sure that you implement those things into your life. Hey, look, um, I want you all to know, I have a phone conference. Join me on my phone conference every Thursday evening. I am there ministering the word of God. If you are serious about praying and you want your prayer to get all the way from your mouth, your heart to the heart of God in heaven, I'm telling you, join me me on that phone conference. I am there ministering the word of God from 8 o'clock until 8.30. Come on. If the, the information is on the screen and just mute your phone and enjoy the word of God. When you come on, have your pad, a pen, and your Bible. That's right. Because there are different versions of the Bible that we uh, understand. So when you come on that phone conference, be sure and have that the, those things with you as well so that you can take down information. Thank you.
If you want me to come to your women's conference or your workshop, your luncheon, your women's luncheon or uh, women's prayer breakfast, hey, look, email me. That's right. Give me an email. Shoot me an email and I will come, that's right, to your women's conference, your women's workshop or your uh, um or your women's uh, pr uh, prayer lunch and whatever it is, I will be there to join in um, with you. I hope you've already called a friend, called a relative, and called a neighbor to let them know that Minister B.J. Franklin is on. We are going to get into the Word of God, and we are still talking about knowing God's Word. And it's not enough to know it. We have to live by the Word of God because the Bible tells us, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. If you're going to live, I'm telling you, a good, prosperous, whole life that God intended for us to live, you know, we're going to have to line our lives up with the word of God. God has left it in his word as to how we are to live and what we are supposed to be doing. That's right. Uh, uh, we're going to look at that John uh, 14 and 14 here in just a minute. That's right, because when you line your life up with the word of God and you do what God has told you to do and you're living and you know you're living according to God's word. Look what that John 14 and 14 said. If you ask anything I said anything in my name, I will do it. That's what Jesus has told us. When we line ourselves up with the word of God, he said anything. He said that he will do it. You ask in his name but you cannot ask in his name if you don't know that's right. You have to have a personal relationship with him and go to God in prayer and ask for anything in his name. What is it that you want? What is it that you've been trying to do? Uh, and and when, let, me, let, let me say this here. Let me say this because we're going to look at Matthew 6.33. But let me say this here. When we ask God for something, make sure that it's lined up with the word of God. I don't know about you, but I'm asking God for some things for ministry so that I can give to the people of God. I'm not asking him for no houses and cars and clothes and Gucci's and, 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 and Prada and all that. I'm not even asking him for none of that. What I'm asking for when he said anything in my name. What I'm asking him for is spiritual things. Teach me how to pray. I ask him, Lord, help me to memorize scripture. Able the Holy Spirit spirit to bring it to my mind. I ask him, Lord, when I stand before your people, give me the words to say. I ask him. He said anything in his name, but I'm telling you, we have to learn how to ask for spiritual things. That's right. I'm asking him, Lord, show me where to go. Lord, show me what to do. And things of this nature, because you know what? Matthew 6, 33 says here, it says, but seek ye seek first the kingdom of God. Are you seeking the kingdom of God? And there's that conjunction there. His righteousness. Are you doing that? If we begin as people of God, as children of God, people which are called by his name, if we would begin to seek the kingdom of God first. That's right. Things of the kingdom. How are we going to seek the how are we going to seek the uh, kingdom of God? Through his word. That's right. And his righteousness. Right living. That's right. Righteous living. Holy living. Lined up with the word of God. Not lined up with sister so and so and lined up with brother so and so. No, no, no. That is not our plumb line. Our plumb line is the word of God. His righteousness. Do you you live a righteous life, a holy life before God. And guess what? It goes on here to say, and all these, all these things shall be added to you. The house, the car, the pride of the Louis Vuitton, all this other stuff, whatever it is you want. But you have to seek the kingdom of God first. That's why I say, say, we have to know the word of God. Knowing God's word is what we are talking about. And living by the word of God. We're asking God for, for, for all this other stuff, all this materialistic stuff, but we're not seeking the kingdom of God. We have to keep in mind, 
my brothers and sisters, we are not from here. That's right. I am not from here. I'm going through here on my way to heaven. Just like Jesus. When Jesus was born, born of a virgin, born of Mary, born of a virgin. That's right. He came down from heaven. Yes, he did. To save us. Yes, he did. He came all the way down from uh, 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 heaven to save us. We're going to look at Acts 4 and 12. We're going to uh, 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 look at that Acts 4 and 12. Because there's no other way that we're going to be able uh, 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 to live unto God. That's right. We're going to have to accept Jesus as our Lord. Jesus came down. Yes, he did. And when Jesus came down here and Jesus lived on this earth from what the word of God said, 33 and a half years, what was he doing? He was ministering to the people. That's right. And they didn't like him for doing what he was uh, uh, born down here to do. That's right. He was God himself. That's right. Teaching us and showing us how to live this life. That's right. How to live when we're persecuted. How to live when we're talked about. How to live when we are abused. That's right. And guess what? The Bible tells us if they done it to us, to him, they're going to do it to us. Look at that Acts 4 and 12 because the, it lets us know, know that there, there's, there is no salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That's right. We have to be saved. That's right. There's no other name. Jesus is the way. And Jesus said in his word, hey, you ain't you're not just walking up to God and that's not going to happen my brother and sister do you hear what I'm saying just because you preach in the pulpit Mr. Preacher, Mr. Pastor Mr. Bishop, Mr. Apostle that's what I'm talking about Miss Evangelist, just because you do those things, guess what you're not just going to walk up into God's presence and think he's going to hear you and your life is not lined up with the word of God, that is not going to happen, you have not experienced accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but yet you're preaching that and you're ministering that to others, but your life, it reflects it for a little while while you're hanging around the premises at the church house, that's right, while you're hanging around the premises doing your chores in the church, that's right, preaching, ushering on the deacon board, singing in the choir, all on the instruments, running around the church and hollering and all this, speaking in tongues, hey, that doesn't mean anything if your life is not lined up with the word of God. That's right. Your prayers are not being heard. That's why I say, come on that prayer line and learn how to pray. We God is a holy God. He can't even look on sin. You know, when Jesus was dying on the cross, God turned his back against him because he was dying and he had the sins of the whole world up on him. God cannot even look on sin. That's right. So we're going to have to live a life that is lined up with the word of God. So we're going to have to put ourselves in position. What is it that you want from God? What is it that you've been trying to do all this time and it hasn't worked yet? You need to be sure that you are saved, that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're going to have to know the word of God. That's right. We have to know the word of God. And that's why I said when we are praying and asking God for anything, he said you can ask for anything in his name. We're asking for spiritual things. Why? Because I'm a spiritual being. I'm not asking for earthly things. I'm asking for spiritual things. That's right. Show me how, Lord God. Show me how to live. Show me how to talk. Show me how to walk while I'm down here in this uh, uh, mean, evil world. Look at what Jeremiah 10 and 6 uh, uh, says. I hope you have your pad and pen and you're writing this information down, these scriptures down. Jeremiah uh, 10 and 6. Uh, let's us know there is none like you, oh, oh Lord. You are great and your name is great and mighty. Yes, it is. God is a great God. God is a awesome God. Jeremiah said there's none like him. Nobody even come close to him. I know your grandmother was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and Paul, Paul and mom and all that, but they don't even come close to that. That's right. There's none like him and there will never be another him. And that's why it says, 
says over in the book of Acts, that's the only way we have to go by Jesus. That's right. We got to go through Jesus. Jesus said in his word, he said, I am the way. He said, I am the truth and I am the life. No man come to the Father except by him. That's right. So get yourself lined up with the word of God. Get into you a Bible teaching church. That's right. Get into you a Bible teaching church. That's right. So that you can learn the word of God. Listen to the word of God. Love the word of God. Love the things of God. That's right. Not all this worldly stuff. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. That's right. The Bible tells the Bible tells us be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of our minds. That's how we're transformed. By the renewing of our mind. And how do we renew our mind? In the word of God. We cannot spend too much time in the word of God. You could never spend too much time in the word of God. Because I'm telling you, that's what sustains us. That's what's giving us the strength we need. When we go through things, call the recall the word of God. The Holy Spirit is going to recall it to, to, to you. That's right. The Holy Spirit will let us know. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. He'll let us know. In all your ways, you acknowledge him. And he's going to direct your path. Yes, he is. The Holy Spirit will let us know. You know, God will give us the desires of our heart. What is it that you desire from God? Cast your cares upon him. He cares for you. But see, you would know that if you don't read the word of God. And then not only that, like I said, we stand on that. I tell the Lord, Lord, you said in your word that if I abide in you and your word abide in me, you told me that I could ask anything in your name and you said that you would do it. So I check myself. Am I lined up with the word of God so that I can receive from God what I'm asking God for? And another thing, and, and no matter how long it takes, no matter how long it takes, do you hear what I'm saying? We're going to continue to stand on the word of God, no matter how long it takes. That's right. I've been praying, I've been praying and praying for this one loved one of mine for many years. And I'm telling you, well over 15 years. And I'm still trusting God because I know that God is able to do it. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Yes. He can do it, and I know that he can do it. But do you believe that? You have to believe that. You have to walk by faith and not by sight. I don't care how it looks. I'm not concerned with that. I serve a God that have all power. Both heaven and earth is in his hand. When he got out, got up out of the grave that resurrection uh, Sunday morning, he, say, he declared, I got all power. Both heaven and earth is in his hand. He got power over life, power over death, power over the grave. And this little stuff I'm praying about and you're praying about, he, got, he has power over that. But you have to believe that. And you're going to have to trust God. That's, that's right. We, 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 we have his word. He's given us his word. That's right. And before his word fell, he said that heaven and earth will pass away. But we have to know the word of God. That's right. We have to know the word of God for ourselves. And we have to continue to seek God. That's right. We have to continue to seek him. And we're going to have to continue to have a prayer life. You, uh, uh, Jesus always prayed. When he was here on earth, that's what he did. He prayed. Let's look at this, uh, Mark 1, 30, 1 uh, 35. And we're going to look at this. This is the last scripture that we'll probably look at, uh, Mark 1 and 35. Look at that and see what it says. Because Jesus, when he was here, he prayed. And in the morning, rising, he was rising up a, a great while before day. He went out and, 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 and he prayed. In a solitary place, it says here. He went out a solid, solitary place and he prayed a great while, it, it says there, in that Mark one thirty five. Now in the morning, having, having risen a long while, a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. Before the street lights go off, I am on my prayer line with Mother Betty Donald them. And I am praying. 
and calling on the name of Jesus. You don't know what's going to happen in a, in a run of a day. If Jesus had to get up early and pray, what about us? We have to have a prayer life in order for things to get done in the earth. We have to have a prayer life. I did not say pray. I said a prayer life, a life of prayer. This is what we do. That's right. Jesus knew that he needed God to lead him and guide him in a run of a day. So he got up real early. You know, get up before people begin to move in your house. Before those, those are, are big trucks and all these sirens and all this other stuff. And, and the day begin to uh, 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 get started. And, and you hear all these other stuff. Dogs barking and, and, and roosters crowing and, and all this other stuff. Get into you a quiet, solitary place. I don't know where your place is, but I have a place where I go and I meet God on a daily basis. Yes, I do. And then not only that, I am walking and talking with my mind stayed on him through in and out today. He says for us to pray without ceasing. That's right. We don't want to just pray when things begin to happen. No, that's not the way we, 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 we want to do that. We want to be prayed up and continue in prayer. Just like Jesus did when he got up early in the morning. Do you have a prayer life? Do you look forward to going, getting in your prayer chair or your war room and praying and talking to God? I believe God looks forward to us that has made it a way of life to meet him. Whatever, if it's in the morning time. If it's in the evening time. All throughout the day. God wants to hear from us. Us. Yes, he does. And Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. First of all, Lord God, we come to tell you that we love you and that we thank you. Lord God, we love you because you first loved us, Lord God. For while we were yet sinners, you sent your only begotten son to die for us, Lord God. And Father God, we just can't thank you enough for your darling son, Jesus. Because we understand, Father God, that if it was not for Jesus, there's no way that we could come before the throne of God. Because I heard Jesus said, no man can come to the Father except by I, him. I heard him say that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for bringing us out of darkness into your marvelous light that we're able to have a relationship with you and the Father. Thank you, Lord God, that you told us to come before the throne of God boldly and let our requests be made known unto thee. Now, Lord God, we pray for men and women and boys and girls all around the world, Lord God. Father God, teach us that we're your name, Master, how to go out and compel men and women and boys and girls to come to Christ before it's everlasting too late. Father God, help us to remember that you said, Lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the earth. And Father God, we just bless your holy and divine name. We love you, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God. And we pray and we ask him all these things in the mighty name of Jesus, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you join me on that conference call on Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. Thank you so much.